How about now? I'm not even going to look at that because I'm going to hear sound, no sound, no sound muted for like the next 30 seconds. Sorry. Soaked. Oh, Peter. So act. I don't even think that's a word. <laughs> Fail emote from the start. You're so right. You are so right. Let's find the right button. Bing. All right. How's it going, everybody? Happy Sunday. Again, that's what I already said, but you didn't hear me. <laughs> I said, happy Sunday, how's everybody doing? And I was calling out all your names. All righty. Ole, 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 ole. What's up, fellas? All right, Ikafar, thank you, sir. Do you like unicorns or planes? So, unicorns or planes. Yeah, I can only go up here from now, huh? Is it possible to synchronize multiple WLED nodes? Yes, absolutely, Arnold. It certainly absolutely is. Ikafar says planes. Mm -hmm. da -da -da. Charlie's here. All right. The Matrix Excel is available. We're all dead. <laughs> yeah. That, you know what? I was. I, that's funny that you comment on that, Chris, because... Oh, there it is. It's back. Because it, that happened. Like, I opened this up, and I was looking at it, and it said off. And then it... Like, I watched it go unavailable. And I looked up there, and I'm like, no, I see it's still... Like, it's on. It's working up there. It shouldn't be unavailable. Um, let's answer. There it goes, and it's even turning on. Yay. Oh, that's beautiful, too. All right, let's answer the question. I, don't, I didn't catch the name of the person who asked the question, but somebody said, can we uh, sync multiple WLED boards? And the answer is, heck yeah, you can. Um, let's see. I'll, I'll show you just real quick. I'll try and point you to the settings that you need to use. So there's this little sync button, right? So if you click that sync button, it says other lights in the network will now sync to this one. So that means this one is, is outputting information to sync with. This light and other lights in the network will no longer sync. So you got to have that sync turned on. And then the other thing, if you don't mess with it, you probably don't have to change it. But the other thing that you have to look at is... Oh, it's in sync interfaces. Is this UDP port? Oh, shoot. I just screwed it up. <laughs> but this UDP port just has to be the same for all of your devices. And then if you um, if you tell them all to sync, yeah, you can set a sync send and a sync receive. So just make sure that the ones, the one that you're going to be using as the control to control them all is set to sync send. And then the ones that uh, are going to receive it are all have their sync um, receive turned on. And I believe you can do that. I guess that's the only place. No, 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 no. Here we go. Yeah. Send notifications. No, notifications. No, notifications. That's not what I wanted. Never mind. I guess that's it. Maybe that's the only place you do it is with that, uh, with that button up there, that sync button. It's changed a couple times, so I'm I'm not maybe up to date on what the latest is. But yes, you absolutely can, and it has to do with this sync button and that UDP port. Okay. All right. Are you a Doctor Z's Twitch subscriber? Oh, I'm, why do I read the Nightbot messages? I should just know to ignore the Nightbot messages. You shouldn't ignore the Nightbot messages, but I should. You're welcome, Arnold. That was right. It was Arnold that asked. Okay. All right, so what's going on today, guys? Question, do you know about the in-phase solar add-on for Home Assistant? I just got my solar operational just in time. It's 107 today. Good night, Frankie. I don't know anything about the about that particular add-on, the in-phase solar, so I'm assuming that's the brand. Is that the brand of solar equipment that you have? Um, I don't, that's not my brand, so I haven't played with that particular add-on. The way mine works, um, you set up the the uh, your account on the manufacturer's website. So in this case, for you, it would be in phase, and then somewhere in there, they should be they should give you an API key or something like that. Could be called something like that, and then the add-on in Home Assistant probably needs that key, or it might just need your login credentials. It might just need your user and password maybe, and then it should get it. But if you if that doesn't work, then you can do um, 
What's that other one called? PV Outpost. Pretty much every manufacturer, pretty much every solar manufacturer will let you update to PV Outpost. And if you um, if you up, if you upload the PV Outpost, then there's a PV Outpost uh, component in Home Assistant you can download. Uh, you can download that information. Which is the easiest way to get Home Assistant working on an old laptop? Um, I would say probably um, Proxmox. Probably Proxmox. Proxmox and then the one-line install for Home Assistant that uh, Whiskers made up a while back. Ruperto, thank you very much for the tip, amigo. How do I connect an RGBW to use on Hyperion? That's a good question. Uh, probably, let's go to Hyperion. There, I'm assuming if you go to configuration LED hardware right here, you have to pick whichever kind of LEDs you have. I don't know which of these are RGBW. Um, I assume, are you, are you connecting them directly to the Pi? If you're connecting them directly to the Pi, then hopefully maybe it's these SK6812s, is that what you have? I think those are RGBW. If you have something else, some other kind, I'm not 100% sure what you choose. If you're using WLED, then you use the UDP raw, and then you just make sure that WLED is controlling your RGBW lights, which I think it can, but I'm not 100% sure about that either, because I don't have any, I don't have any WLED or uh, RGBWs. Do I use a PC or a Pi, John? I use a PC. Thank you, Massive. Thank you for subscribing. Um, yeah, John, I don't use, or sorry, I use a PC now. Uh, it's And it's a Nook that runs Proxmox. Proxmox is the operating system, and then you add Home Assistant or Tuya Convert or whatever else you'd like onto it uh, as virtual machines. And it works great. Um, if you do use a Pi, I would seriously look into, well, at least backing up everything constantly like every day, daily backups to like Google Drive, because the likelihood that at some point in the life of the Pi, you will you will burn out an SD card is, is pretty high. And that, that will ruin your day real quick. But if you were backing up every day, you're doing full snapshots every day to Google Drive, then you should be in good shape. Or, come give me a hug and then you can close the door. Mwah. Or you can do the boot from like SS, uh, SSD, I think you can do now with Pi 4. I don't know 100% about that. Um, and then the other thing to do, I think if you do your, if you do your Home Assistant database off of, the, off of the SD card, that can help not burn up your SD card, not destroy your SD card. So there you go. Quindor's here. Hallelujah. All right, Stuart, thank you very much. My server with Home Assistant died. Haven't ran it in two weeks, but I have backups. Hope I'm not too far behind when I get back into it. Yeah, I I lost when I lost my Pi um, SD card, which this Thanksgiving will be two years ago. It's amazing how that sticks in your brain. It was bad. I hadn't I didn't have a backup for like two months or something. I lost a lot of work. But now I have backups. I use the, um, I, I can show you which add-on I use if you'd like to see, which I bet you do. Oh, we're already on 114.1. Cool. Um, this is the one I use, I believe. I think I deleted the other one. So yeah, this is the one I use. Hasio Google Drive Backup. And then, and it's pretty easy to set up if you have a Google account. Um, you, you set your, I think this will even tell... Home Assistant to, you know, how many um, snapshots and when to make snapshots. So I don't even think you need to do anything else, but I, I'm not 100% on that. Um, but yeah, I set this up and then it, every, every morning it does a whole, or does a snapshot, sends it to Google Drive. So I'm never more than a day behind. <clears throat> How's the bug coming? Hey, Father Time, how you doing, buddy? Haven't done anything with the bug in a while. I, all I've been doing is like trying to slowly uh, sand off all the paint. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I haven't made a whole lot of progress. The biggest reason is the battery. And um, I've talked about the battery and I, th I think that my battery output is limiting how fast my car can go. And the 
the test so far the only test i can come up with for that is to get another battery which is not a not a cheap solution but it may be the only option i have however i may have a use for my other battery if i don't sell it which i might do um i may end up using that battery as a solar backup which is pretty cool What's the add-on ring devices to MQTT? So yeah, that, that add-on, I, I don't even think it's running, is it? Yeah, it needs to be updated. I don't think it's running. Yeah, it's not even running. But what it's supposed to do is take your ring devices, like your doorbell or something, and uh, make it so that when somebody presses your button on your doorbell, or I don't know what else it does, honestly. I, I started to install it, as you can see, I didn't even finish. And then it's supposed to just... Um, create an MQTT message so that you can use those things in Home Assistant. I don't remember why. Somebody probably told me, oh, try this when I was complaining about my ring doorbell. And so I installed it, but I never finished. Yeah, I think they, I think the integration, Sir Good Enough is correct. I think the integration for this, uh, for ring devices has improved significantly. So I don't know that I don't know how necessary this is, but this was an option. And that, again, I didn't get very far with it, as you can see. Arnold says, "Have I ever used AmbiBox for Ambilight? Nope, have not. Sorry, Migo. Mister Fixers, uh, can you can see Preview in Hyperion, but LED lit up randomly, not changing? Could it be an LED problem? Is there a way to check GPIO? It could be an LED problem. I don't know a, a way to check the GPIO other than to use different LEDs." Um, do you have like an extra, like a leftover piece of your LED strip that you could maybe wire up to the GPIOs and see if they behave better? I have definitely, definitely known LEDs to go bad. And when they do sometimes, oh, I think I threw them away. Oh, no, I didn't. So this, uh, this is my example. So this is a string of pixels, right? WS2811s. And I've used these for a long time for testing different boards and stuff. Um, it's just a scrap little bit. And they always worked fine until like two days ago. I hooked them up to a new a new board and uh, was that I was playing with. And uh, when I went to turn them on, they were just all funky. Like the first one wasn't lit up at all. And then the colors were just wrong. One of them was green. One of them was blue. A couple of them were blue. You know, a couple of them were white. Like it was it was wrong. Something was very wrong. And I thought, uh oh, is the board messed up? So I changed it to a different board that I knew worked. And the lights did the same thing. And then I took some different lights, different pixels, connected them to the board, and they worked fine. Those lights worked fine. So that was my indicator that this was what was wrong. Now, what it probably is, and this has been my experience with these in the past, what it probably is, is this pixel is bad. It's probably just one channel, one of the color channels on this one is bad. So if I just cut that off and use the rest of them, they probably would work fine. So before I throw them away, that's what I would do. So if you have an extra strip of lights, uh, LEDs that you can test with, I would recommend that. How about using a Raspberry Pi Zero for Hyperion? Absolutely, Fernando, you can do that. Can I post the link to the Google Backup Drive integration, please? Uh, yeah, it's in there. You can search for it, but I can... I guess I could do this. Yeah, I mean, this isn't really what you want. What you want is just to go to the add-on store and search for it. If you just go, and I, if you go to the add-on store and then just search for Google, it's right there. I, that's what you want because that's how you want to install it. If you had to start over again, how would you install Home Assistant on your Nook? VM or full Ubuntu VM? I would still do Proxmox. I would still do Proxmox and then VM. It's just working too well. And then it frees up if you have a it frees up the the, the resources of the of the um, Nook or whatever you're using to um, to be able to uh, use for other things. Sorry, and I was just I got confused because. I was looking at these guys as somebody was saying that you have to add this. Okay, so I'm sorry. You, I guess you do need that. Um, this Home Assistant Google Drive Backup Repository. So if you need to do that, then you need to go to Repositories. And I think, is this where you add them? Yeah, add a repository. 
and then you would add that GitHub link that I gave you. So I'm very sorry, I misspoke. I thought you could just go in there and search for it, but it's not part of those uh, officials or community ones that you already have probably then. Sorry, thank you for pointing that out. I make mistakes, that's for dang sure. All right, um, how much memory do you have allocated to Home Assistant in Proxmox? Um, as in RAM? Not very much, yeah, fail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think I only have like two gigabytes of RAM allocated to it and I think two of the cores or something and then um, yeah and then like a hundred and something gigabytes of hard drive but yeah I think it's just two what I've noticed what somebody said is no matter how much you give it it will use it all <laughs> for RAM um, but we can look at it real quick So this is my Proxmox dashboard. Oh good, it filled in my password. That's the first. Man, that's loud today. Dutch Tech Nerd, thank you very much for following. Let's do this little fat unicorn flying across the screen for you. Hey, I don't know, how you doing, man? Uh, let's go to this. This and this. And then we should be able to look at hardware. Oh no, actually it was right there in the summary. Memory usage, yeah, two gigabytes. That's it. Unused RAM is wasted RAM. All right, what did Stove Doc do that's awesome? I want to see. So how many of you started school yet? Our mine start tomorrow, tomorrow and Tuesday. Distance learning on a tight schedule. I made a calendar, and Google and Amazon will announce when it's time to log into each class. That's fantastic, Stove Doc. Good work. Good work. My kids don't want to do homeschool. Neither does my wife. I don't know why. I would. A good wireless video doorbell. I need events in Home Assistant. Which one was best for doing events in Home Assistant? Do you guys remember? I know that um, Rob did a big review on video doorbells. And who else did it? Quindor, did you do one? Quindor did a video doorbell that was just one that he found on like AliExpress that he really liked. I don't remember who else did video doorbells. I know a long time ago... Um, uh, Travis uh, Digiblur did a video doorbell, and he really liked the um, Amcrest, but I don't remember if Am Amcrest gives you the RTSP feed, but I don't remember if the pressing the button gives you a Home Assistant um, bling or not. There you go. That day, I, I hate that word day how how do you say that day woo da woo eh. poe rtsp on viv button integration to works yep Just pop that link in there quindor pop your affiliate link in and um doorbird but it's expensive oh i don't i can't say i, I have my ring and i don't even use it barely the amcrest ring gives you pir but not button press okay that sounds right rick uh nick thank you i think you're right brendan Easy Viz doorbell events? I don't know. Oh, can you? Oh, you're asking. Do, 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 do. Okay. So, uh, well, let's see. Here we go. More questions. And I'm okay to answer questions today for a while because I don't have something as, as planned as I have the last few streams. I know that's not ideal. I know that's not the way most of you like it. And I don't, that's not my ideal way either. But I've been distracted. I can tell you why I've been distracted if you want to know. Um, okay, let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Got a couple questions here to answer. The one was, does the capture card you recommended for Hyperion pass through HMDICEC commands? That's a good question. I don't know. That's like the, to power it on and power it off and stuff like that. I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm sorry. I, I wish I could tell you. I don't use those, so I can't tell you. Has anybody used that, um, capture card that I used in Hyperion and do they, and know if that, uh, if it does the CEC commands or not. Does any splitter do that? Because you could just use a different splitter and a capture card, but I don't know. Requested everywhere is here. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Tech Turtle wants cult boards. <laughs> Maybe. CEC is not passed through that card. Okay, Stuart, thank you. There you go. 
Can you get HDMI card that has 4K output? Yes, you can, Brendan, you can. Y you can get them that have 4K output, but they are a lot more expensive, like 50, 60 dollars. But I don't think you want that because when you input it into the Pi, which is what you're doing with the capture part of it, it's dumbing it down anyways and just sending some color numbers to your LEDs to match the screen. So you're not really using that 4K signal. You're, you're taking that 4K signal and you're just dumbing it down and sending this simple color data. If you want 4K on your screen, what you should do is get a 4K splitter. So you put your HDMI input in to the splitter. You get 4K split. One 4K goes to your your TV, so you can watch in 4K. The other one will go to a different HDMI capture card, and I have a couple of them, and I, I think if you look at my first, that Hyperion video, the full-on video that I did, oops, sorry, I just bumped that. I know when I bumped the microphone, it makes a lot of noise. Um, but I think I put links to these capture cards, these other capture cards in that video description, and they are simple HDMI in, USB out and I tried a couple of them and they both work with Hyperion They both work fine with Hyperion. No issue HDMI in USB out um, And if you ever need a Product that I have linked in a video and you don't remember which video or you don't want to go hunting through the descriptions of the videos I have tried to make it easy for you by making a page on the website. It's funny, I haven't changed this front page in months and months. But if you go to product links, it will give you a spreadsheet that has all the stuff that I have ever linked in a video. So then you can search, I think you can search here if you do a, you can search for HDMI. And here is the HDMI USB converter single. And there's the all-in-one and there's a 4K splitter all ready to go. So I could actually just drop these for you in there, make that easy. Oh, actually, why don't I just drop this in there? That makes that even easier. <laughs> no problem with the caps, I got it, no, I under, no worries. But that will take you probably to, yeah, that one. Which I think of the two of them, I liked better. I had these two. Boing! Thank you, Scythium. Thank you for the cheer. So I have these two, right? This one just feels a little bit more solid. I think it has a metal, has a metal exterior on it. Um, this one is, feels a little more flimsy. It's bigger. It's plastic. <clears throat> it's got a lot of these vent holes in it, which makes me think it gets hot. But to be honest, on the inside, they're probably both the same. This one probably just has a heat sink in it instead of just the vents. I don't know for sure. But of the two of them, I preferred this one, so that's why I put that link in there. But they both did the same. They both did the job the same. And as far as I remember, they were the same price or pretty close to it. Okay? Sweet. Somebody just dropped a glass in the kitchen, it sounds like. Does the HDMI capture card used in the your Hyperion build gets hot? thinking about doing the same, but worried about long-term safety from the heat. I didn't have any heat problems with it. Oops, my, <laughs> my light just went out. I didn't have any heat problems with it, but I do think, I know like guys, ah, one of our user friends was talking about it, and he said he, that he would open it up and put a heat sink on it. So all I can tell you is um, you might have to just watch it. Don't put it next to any any kindling, right? Don't put it next to any dryer lint <laughs> or sawdust and then just uh, keep an eye on it for a while. And if you do have troubles with it, pop it open and get a, you know, you can get a little tiny heat sink and put that on there if you really think you need to. I'm, I wish I could tell you, I don't, I haven't used it um, to that extent. Most of what I use is I use the, um, I use the Windows capture software which is what I was going to talk about today. And we still probably get to it eventually when I decide we want to actually have a topic. 
Keep it out of the dryer vent. That's right, Jake. That is right. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right. Christian, first time. First time watching. Whee! Thanks for being here. Mags has the metal one and it works perfectly. And does it get hot, Mags? You be the one to ask because, you, like I said, I don't use it as much. Node MCU programming on a smartphone? Is it possible? Not, not sure. Pre-Tam, not sure. 10 second description of what Proxmox is. There you go. You got it down there. Will gave it to you, I think. Somebody did. Thank you, guys. Did I make a video on installing Home Assistant on Proxmox environment? I think we did it as a live stream a long time ago. Or what you can probably find is I, I think I did it as a um, like a rewind. That's what I call them when I take a, a, a live stream and chop them up. Look at that angry dude. Who's going to watch that guy? Nobody. Nobody at all. <laughs> uh, I think if you go here and you search, you might be able to find something. Where's the search button? I don't have a search button? What? Why is there no search bar? I thought we had a search bar for, for the channel. Oh, there it is. Um, Because I think I did like a one... Yeah, there it is. Live stream rewind. So this would be the one. Because uh, um, it's a one line... I don't know if I... Well, I don't remember what I did. <laughs> How about that? Uh, I don't remember if I <laughs> talked about Proxmox install or not. Oh, no one can see anything? Sorry. <laughs> uh, where's my, why aren't my lights turning on? Did you guys try and, did you guys try and page me? He done it again. Man, what are we like 15 minutes into the stream today and I'm already on my third fail. <laughs> It's going to be bad. Oh, hey, Victor. Uh, anyways, what I what I was saying is this. I guess we have to watch this dork. Blah, 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 blah. Wix website. Stuck on it. <laughs> oh, gosh, you need tweezers right here. Man, Jay Sizzle, that's horrible. That's the worst scream ever. And it's especially loud today for some reason. My my speaker, I think I must have turned up the volume some, some time ago. Oh, man. Wasn't you, Seamus, right? No, that was Jay Sizzle that time. Anyways, this video here. So I don't remember if we go through the install of Proxmox. Probably not. Um... But I think I did that on a on a different stream. Anyways, this is just how you install. Um, maybe I did. I don't remember. Anyways, watch that video. <laughs> it's there. It's all there. Good luck. I don't know. Sorry. Not terribly helpful, I guess. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, R Man. Helping wake everyone up on the stream. Man, do you guys hear that as loud as I do? Good grief. What perfect timing. Home Assistant Pi just failed. Update and crashed itself. Oh, no. Made it to a live stream. Andrew finally made it to a live stream. Choo-choo time. I did install it on the stream. Okay, good, Will. Thank you. Sir Goodenough has a good Maria DB video. Yes, he does. When am I going to get more Digi-Uno controllers for sale? I, that's, thank you for bringing that up, Jed. I just talked to Quindor a couple days ago, and I will be receiving a shipment of 400, which is the biggest shipment that I have received. I think we've only, well, we've gone, we've sold, I have sold grand total of almost 600, I think. And uh, so we're going to get a whole shipment of 400. Hoping that'll last a little while, um, more than a couple days this time anyways. And that should be within two weeks, I'm hoping. Less than two weeks, I hope. I hope, I hope, I hope. How often do I back up my main home assistant? Every single day, Luke's. Every single day, every morning at 6 a.m. Tour around my Lovelace layout. Need to reserve some. Working hard to get more available. Yes, he is. <laughs> um, 
So I think what I can do for some of you guys that are asking, I've, I've seen two questions about my Lovelace layout here. And I'm pretty sure that on GitHub, I have posted, or it's gist, G-I-S-T, github.com. And I'm pretty sure that I have, I don't want all gists, I want my gists. You need a screwdriver? Because I'm trying, I want to screw back in my, like, my thing to go in my bed. Your bed? Yeah, my bed. Oh, no. Not my bed, my drawer. Okay. You want this? And I also need your mini charger. And your mini, um, something. Oh, the vacuum cleaner's in there. Mm -hmm. I'm cleaning out my place. All right, good for you. Dawson's doing some home maintenance, it looks like. <laughs> Libya, it's time, 9.30, hey, Allah. Should happen this week. What? Oh, is Sir good enough making a new video? Oh, sorry. Okay, let's do this. So, anyways, let me give you this. Uh, get, just GitHub Sniper Cane. And then poke through there because I'm pretty sure that in there I have the um, bar card, the solar stuff for the bar card. And I also have the spinning Lovelace buttons. And you will need, this is, this uses the custom button card and this uses the custom bar card. So you need to install those through the community store in order to have access to those or they won't actually work the way you want them to. And then here's my home assistant restart buttons and here's my Lovelace radio buttons. And I think that's all for now. So that's the, that's most of what I've got here. This is just the weather card, the animated weather card. These are the radio buttons. The um, These buttons work basically the same as these. These are just activating things. But this is all custom button card, custom button card, custom button card. These are all custom button card. Um, and this is the bar card. This is the... Which card is that? Uh, this one is the one that tells me which lights are on in the house. So that I can go through and go, oh, garage lights don't need to be on. I can turn those off. I love this card, by the way. Um, this one is the auto entities card. It's auto entities card. That is like a 10 second quick review. <laughs> maybe you use a repo instead of gist. Yeah, maybe eventually. I do have though, all of my, I do have my repository. Like I do have my home assistant, um, repository where everything is there. And so my Lovelace should be there and you should be able to see everything in it. Cause I do back it up. I do, I do, I haven't probably done that in a month. Um, but most of that should still be there. Home assistant config right here. So here's my home assistant config and it is, I think pretty well scrubbed clean there. You may still get, a uh, updated image from motion detection in my office. So hopefully I'm not in my underwear when that comes through. But you should be able to go through here, I would expect, and find my uh, Lovelace file. Is Lovelace not in the config, really? Is her good enough? I thought it was. 26 days to be exact. <laughs> Curious on the D20 symbol in the sidebar. Oh yeah. That is my, so I, I just wanted a different icon. So this is my um, file editor. I, Frank helped me just change the name to configurator and ator because that was funny. And uh, I wanted, it was the same icon as the Tasmo admin. And I just wanted to change the icon. So that is from, that is from not, uh, it's not MDI. It's the other one. What's the other icon people? The other icon ones that we use. I want to say it's fast, but it's, I don't think it's fast. It's something else. But basically that opens up this and hopefully it's not my secrets file. Woo. It's not. So that opens up this font. Awesome. Yeah, I think it is font. Awesome. That sounds right. Yep. Yep. It's font. Awesome. And actually, some of these things down here are also font awesome. Like here's my little D and D thing. I just wanted to use it. So that's what I put there. <laughs> and I think there's a dragon that pops up in here at some point as well. These change a little bit based on where we're at. Like right now we're using 10 kilowatts, man, 1.21 gigawatts. 
Jelly. Mine still looks like the old home assistant. We guessed correctly. What do we win? You win unicorns. <laughs> Any interesting AliExpress purchases? Not yet, but let me show you what I do have in my AliExpress cart. I hope you guys are okay with this. This is just like a total squirrel stream today. Huh? Right now, we're just totally squirreling. We haven't really hit on anything that's going to be useful for anybody to go back and watch later. So this is just a, this is just a, uh, a goof off stream. All right, let's go to AliExpress and I'll show you what's in my cart because it's funny. Dr. Pepper, please. You know what's sad? I don't have any Dr. Pepper matter. What is with this? These chickies. Go away, chickies. Go away. I'm doing it. I'm taking the plunge, guys. I'm taking the plunge. I haven't actually hit the, the purchase button yet, but we're going to buy... I'm going to buy some dome houses. <laughs> so... <laughs> that's what's in my AliExpress card. So any interesting AliExpress purchases? Right there. <laughs> You ran out of Dr. Pepper too? It's the apocalypse now for sure. Right? <laughs> Dragon Ball Z. My HOA, that's the best part is I don't have an HOA. Yay! DBZ houses. Oh, is that what they live in in Dragon Ball Z? I wish I could have watched it. It's a chunky shipping cost. Yeah, it is. But when you think about what they're sending, wow, that is a chunky shipping cost. I think they must have boosted that because this one's a lot bigger and the shipping cost is less. But if you think about what you're getting, I mean, you're buying a house. I mean, this thing is, this thing is, this thing here is like 20 feet in diameter. It's like six, six and a half meters or something like that in diameter. So much focus on making TP. Forgot about Dr. P. <laughs> Where am I going to put them? Well, we, we have, we're trying, we are in the process of buying an imp, some empty land out in some farm fields in Idaho. That's, that's where we'll put them. So you may hear more about that over the coming months, but if everything goes according to plan, we will have um, some empty acres of farmland up in Idaho in the next few months. And that's where we'll put them. Pretty sweet, right? Uh oh, just joined. Don't know if you already talked about Hyperion. I need help on mine. It keeps resetting every few minutes. Oh no. Tell us some more about what uh, your setup is, Gzar, and we can try and help you. Going off grid? Yes, actually, Will, I am. I, we won't stay up there all the time, but we will be going off the grid, which is something else we could talk about. If any of you know anything about going off the grid completely, that's what we need to know about. So I'm starting my research on that. Doomsday prepping. Power is why it's resetting. There you go. Oh, Chris, that's probably right. Thank you, Chris. That's a good, 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 good point. Check your power supply. It's probably not giving enough uh, power. Off-grid is a dream. Home assistant in your dome? Yep, we're going to call it dome assistant. <laughs> Internet and empty Idaho farmland would be questionable at best. No, it's good. We stood up there yesterday. That's part of the reason why I haven't been too prepared. That's why, because I we've been up in Idaho like twice this week. And it's like a three hour, not quite three hour drive up there and back. So we've been up there making arrangements and trying to get it all to work out. But energy efficient LEDs, heck yeah. Energy efficient LEDs. Um, we're actually going to have, so what we're going to do with this, we're going to put a basement under it as well. And then we're going to partially bury it. <laughs> so it's already made out of like it's like four inch thick basically styrofoam insulation stuff and here i'll you guys can poke around i'll give this to you i like that idea too will 12 volt wiring throughout i like that idea too because there's so much stuff that you can just run on that you you waste so much power in the uh if you're going from solar through an inverter to 120 and then you're converting 120 back to 12 volts or 5 volts for a lot of the stuff that you use, just go straight to 12 volts and be good. Or even if I just go like the power, the solar system might make, you know, some higher voltage, but just dumb it down to, right? With 12 volts with solar is a lot you can still do. Amen, man. Amen. 
48 volt PoE. Giant camper with a basement, pretty much. It's just a parked, it's a parked camper, but it's going to look so cool. We're going to make this door. So I was doing some research on uh, Hobbit, how to build a Hobbit door, right? A round door. Tell me that wouldn't be the awesomest thing right there. A Hobbit door on that. How long does it usually take to ship from IT, Ikafar says? I don't think it's been too long. Less than two weeks. There you go. And Raspy says two weeks. Does Ask still work? It might. I don't know. I'd have to go look at the channel and see if it got posted in there. You're just now watching Lord of the Rings, Will? Nice. We've been, uh, we've been, uh, we've been doing movie night, me and some of the kids, every Sunday night. And we've finished, what did we watch first? Oh, they did, they did the last Airbender series, cartoon series. And then I joined them to watch the Lord of the Rings extended versions. So we've been watching one disc every Sunday night. So tonight we're finally finishing Return of the King. So it's been six, six Sundays for the last week and a half. And then we've talked about, are we going to do the Hobbit next or are we going to do Harry Potter next? And I think we're going to do the Hobbit and then we'll do Harry Potter. Is the Hyperion integration in Home Assistant any good? Yeah, Jill, I think it is. I think I did it and it basically makes it an RGB light. So uh, I don't remember if you can pick any effects. Maybe you can. I used it and then I, I screwed it up by changing some IP addresses and stuff. And then I was having a hard time re redoing it, but you watched them all in one day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Will is also halfway through return of the King. Well, that's where we are today. You betcha. Got a question to live stream. Use ask commands. There it goes. It should still be working. And I don't think we, st I don't think we've updated the, the, the Nightbot stuff. I don't think we fixed all the Nightbot stuff, me and Blade. How are I connecting to as of now? Um, Audi boy, I am connecting. So there's two parts to connecting an Amazon Echo to work with Home Assistant. One is, do you want your Amazon Echo to control your Home Assistant devices so that you can say, Amazon Echo, turn on my bathroom light and she'll do it. So that's one thing. For that, I'm using Nabucasa. You can do it through, you know, without the subscription for Nabucasa. And I did a video about that month or a couple months ago. Uh, you basically just go on and set up your own develop. You set yourself up like a developer and you create your own app and you give it the information so that it only connects to your home assistant instance. And then you activate the app on, on your um, Amazon Echo web page or, or your app. So that's that. That's the free way or Nabucast is the way I do it, five bucks a month. And then the other thing is if you want her to play music or do text to speech, for that I use the um, uh, media player integration. With, which is in the um, community store. Hyperion set up on a video. I make it if you want to link so you can see. Let me know. Just pause the video at 13. Okay, cool. Yeah, post it. Really surprised that I don't have Plex. I just don't watch enough. I mean, maybe I would. Somebody actually, I, there's, a, there's a guy who has been a, a watcher of my videos who has a big Plex server, and he's given me access to it. And I've watched a few things a couple times, but I honestly, when I, when I watch TV, I just, I will usually be sitting here at my desk doing something else and I'll turn on YouTube TV. Is that you requested everywhere? <laughs> Is that yours? Really? That you gave me access to? That's right. I think that's right. Yeah. But I, but like I said, you could probably look and see, I haven't really watched anything, right? Oh, you haven't let me have access to it. Okay. So it must be somebody else. You just have a huge plex. Gotcha. <laughs> that's what she said. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh. <laughs> I had to. I couldn't help it. Zoe's been watching The Office. Zoe's, Zoe's been binging on The Office, so got The Office on, the, on my mind. Just purchased 24 terabytes, working hard on migrating to 12 core Xeon system. Holy cow, Will. See, that's like beyond my comprehension. Whew. Two Plex NAS devices. So we're just, we're just such, um, we just do Amazon. It's bad. We just pay for movies. We just pay for the ones we want. Synology makes sub 251 and Netgear one works well too. You liked the out in the field install video? Good. I'm glad to hear that, Raspy. I'll do more of those. I'm going to do, well, I've already got the footage for uh, installing the Permatrack at, at my friend's house. 
and uh, I'll do more of them. I'll do more of them because I realized that that was popular and it was fun for me and it was easy. Uh, I enjoyed it too. And I've got Zachary learning how to be the cameraman. He's doing a great job. So I'll do more of those. If you like it, especially, I'll do more of those. All right, let's look at this thing for a minute. I am actually going to do, uh, let's, let's start on what I thought would be the topic for the day. I seemed in my element. <laughs> Thanks. Everyone has their own thing. I store thousands of home videos and pictures. Oh, that's cool. Plex works awesome for that. Oh, that's cool too. Again, we just use mostly Google for that too. Xpinology. Oh, I don't know what that one is. It's funny you didn't know the Fire Stick came with an extension. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is funny. I was like, oh, crap, it won't fit. That was pretty funny. It was a fail. I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? Oh, that was funny. Hey, Rob's here. How's it going, man? Hey, what's your back to school plan, Rob? Tell us about what's going on for you at school. My kids are all going back. Teachers are all going back. Whoop, whoop for Norway. Question about Megatree. 32 strings, 55 volt pixels. Break up the strings to four digit unos. Ooh. Still have them seamlessly in X lights. You may struggle, Gary. 32 strings of 50. So you're talking, what is that, 160? No, that's 1600 LEDs. If man, um, well, like there's two things I would recommend to you, Gary. You, you may be okay. If you, you may be okay. Well, I can tell you what I would try. I'll tell you what I would try. And I, but I'm not sure that that's going to be a great solution to use the E131 on, on an ESP8266 to run that many LEDs and get them coordinated well. I just have had a lot of lag sometimes with those. Maybe you won't, but I have. And it could be also a Wi-Fi issue. Maybe my Wi-Fi is not, wasn't doing so well. Um, but if you use an ESP32, you may be better off. Um, that may be able to do the 1600. I've used an ESP32 um, and done 800 from X lights and been pretty good. Hasn't been too bad, 800 pixels, but that's all I had. So I don't know how well it would do more. Um, but that would be my recommendation. That's a lot. And then, the, and then Quindor says the Dig Quad, or Will says the Dig Quad is the solution. How so many Wi Fi controllers will you get lag on the lights? Yeah, you might, Peter. I agree. Oh no, who's having a speedy recovery? What happened? I missed something. WLED has to catch up, that's right, to the Dig Quad. National news for it a few days ago. Oh no, you made national news, that's bad. We're supposed to be on four weeks of e-learning, then the state said F that and is making us go back after one week of e-learning. Basically a totally wasted week. Oh jeez. When are you gonna just, when are you gonna just retire, Rob, and YouTube full time? Did you get your silver play button yet? I'm wondering how what the what the lag is on on getting those. How long it takes before they send it to you, or if they make you buy it? Did they make you buy it or anything? Hey, Basby. Do I ship Dig Unos to the UK? Not me, Stuart, but but Quindor does. If you go to um, quinled.info, uh, he has it. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. I've been thinking about you and I've been thinking that this might be the straw breaking the camel's back, right? Be like, why am I doing this again? If I could just stay home and if you did a video, if you, if you, I mean, I don't know what Paul's doing. It would be fun to, to have a candid conversation, you know, a candid private conversation and ask him how well he's doing with, um, you know, income from YouTube. I know he says he's still working his other job. Um, but I, you know, if you put out a lot of videos, I, I've noticed even in the last, like I put out like four videos in the last two weeks or something just because I had footage and I had time to edit. And so I just started popping them out and there was a significant increase in my, in my ad revenue. Um, it's not enough to retire, but I mean, it makes a difference when you put out new videos a lot. Seems to. 
So I think if you were not doing school and you were putting out a couple of videos a week or something like that, especially, you know, at your, your level, when you, you get some serious number of views and stuff. So I think you, you can do okay. I think you can bypass your teacher salary and probably enjoy it more and be safer, all those things. You like not being stressed out if the video fails. That's true. That's true. That's true. What my editing software, Frog Eye, I use um I use Final Cut Pro. But if I was starting over and if I'm giving you a recommendation, I would recommend uh DaVinci Resolve. I would recommend DaVinci Resolve. It's free, full featured, and uh it's all you need. I just didn't know about it when I when I started. When running Hyperion on Cody Raspberry Pi, do I still need a video capture device? No. If I'm watching videos from Cody, nope, nope. You do not, John. You do not. You, it, it will show up uh, if you use the platform input. So if you go to the configuration, oh no, actually, let's go to remote control. Um, oh, I don't have it because I've, I've, I've turned it off. But this platform capture, platform capture, they could probably use a different name would maybe make it a little bit easier. But platform capture is whatever is coming from the output of the Raspberry Pi. So if you're playing retro games, if you're watching Kodi, uh, if you're just using the desktop um, user interface for, for Raspbian or whatever, anything that's coming out of the HDMI output from the Raspberry Pi, that is the platform capture. And that will go directly to the lights. All right. So let's go to, I want to show you, and I want to play with it um, because I, I, I haven't had a chance to really give it a good run yet. And that is that Glowworm Luciferin GitHub. Has anybody tried this? Um, David has been sending me messages. He's updated it and he's updated. So now it does run Wi-Fi before you had to do it through USB. It does run Wi-Fi. And then he was also telling me something else about how it was, um, how it was uh, calculating which lights you need or something like that. I can't remember exactly. So I'm going to download it and we'll maybe we'll play with it a little bit. See what it does. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Any upcoming collaborations for me? I haven't, I haven't coordinated with anybody. I've been kind of socially isolated. <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, I, I, I can't figure out how to get my, my Broadlink RM Pro to learn RF codes anymore. So I'm feeling like I can't really show my face with Paul Hibbert. This is the one from today. Yeah, that's it. Eight thirteen. I don't like this. I don't, why am I, why is it using this Win 7? Can I use something else? Or Zip 7 Zip or whatever. It's not used to it. Oh, ah, God, it just did it again. Can I extract it with something else? Yeah, let's just do this, whatever. Fine. That's what I want. Yes. Great. Where'd it go? Great. There we go. 813. Perfect. All right. I've got here, I, look at this. Was it Frank or somebody, you guys were asking me about how many um, ESP devices I have the other day, right? Somebody was asking. And this isn't even, this isn't even, this is just a sample. It just, I just pulled these out because I was like, well, I'm going to need to flash this Luciferin thing on something. So I've got some of these are ESP32s, but these are all ESP8266s. And I don't know what's on most of them. They don't have labels or anything. <laughs> uh, all right, let's get rid of that. And then there is also, well, I think I still have that. I wonder if that... Uh, that's part of it. So that's the firmware. And then you also need the the Java thing, which I maybe has not 
been updated. This one. If this hasn't changed in a month or so. Oh, nope, we just updated it three days ago. Okay. Firefly. I'll install that too. So, did I see Paul do, ooh, the home assistant? Did he just do it again recently? In April, I ordered 20 D1 minis just to have them on hand. It was only delivered last week. Checks every 15 minutes once the door's open. Oh, you guys are talking about something else. Wi-Fi is great. Lamps, all the connected power. Don't have any Zigbee. Can I integrate into Wi-Fi setup or do I need to be Zigbee transmitter? Um, you will need a Zigbee to home assistant bridge of whatever kind. So a dongle or I guess the Sonoff. Oh, that's something we could do. The Sonoff Zigbee bridge that you can flash with Tasmoda. Or you can use it just with... Uh, just with the uh, Sonoff LAN add-on, but I'm not a, I wouldn't do that. It gives you a bunch of crazy things. Don't run, don't run. Okay, this is going to probably shut off my screen for a second. Zigbee to MQTT. I'll tell you what the best thing to do, as Diogo is recommending, but the best thing to do is to go to that Black Adder um, site and look at what is compatible with what, and then pick based on that. That's what I would do. Just want to say thanks for everything you do. Thank you very much, John. It's really helped me get things set up. Glad I can watch a live stream. It's been a while. Well, we're glad you're here too. And I think that calls for celebration. Because <laughs> I haven't done it in a few minutes. <laughs> okay, that thing did not seem to install. Did you guys see anything install? I don't see that. Stop that. Let's try the Lucifer in room. Firefly Loose Baron hat. <laughs> so, something ain't working. I don't see it doing any. Oh, there it is. It's in my. Oh, start. Okay. Let's uh, open the settings. Settings. Settings? No. Huh. Oh, there it goes. Gosh. Now it's probably going to open like four times. So this is the Luciferin uh, desktop app. And this is what takes your screen information and sends it to the ESP8266 LED thing. So that's what we'll use. But I'm going to keep answering questions as well because today is a total on scroll day. Can I please demo the Daddy's Echo Show? Joss, uh, that is the custom, I believe this one here is just the custom, um, remember which media player it is or which media player card it is. So this is just my little echo show that I've got down here now, a little five inch echo show. And I don't remember which card it is. It is the mini media player card and that's it. What's kind of nice is. Well, kind of nice. What's really nice is, so say I play some music, and this is going to, I'll have to stop it before it really gets to playing anything. I'm having trouble getting that right now. Oh. Please try again. Oh, I pushed a button and she didn't, she didn't like it. So let's try something else. Looks like she's going to have trouble with that too. Oh, no, here it goes. Alexa, pause. Sorry, guys. But so it gives you, it gives you this, um, you know, album background stuff too. And then I can put the text to speech in here. Hi, Jos. <laughs> See? So that's what it is. It's just that media, mini media. Mini Trouble person convinced you to buy that. Oh no, it was, uh, it was on sale for, um, Father's Day and for like 50 bucks and I just wanted to try it. But I actually like it. I actually like it. I like it. It's nice because I have I have uh, at least the um, album art on my desk too. So I use it for listening to music mostly. Um, and so I like having the album art 
and the, and it gives you know if you if you're listening to something and it's on Amazon Music like Garth Brooks, it gives you the words so I can sing along. Bonus. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used the a camera for anything yet. I'm starting to like Z-Wave. It's been really solid. Oh, that's cool. Zigbee, on the other hand, not so much, huh? No singing. <laughs> Remember, recommended on Discord with you. Oh, did you? Was that you? Was that you, Seamus? You were the one? Who recommended that crap? Sorry, I forgot. Heat on. Where do you live? The South Pole? No. Oh, no, no. What was that? Oof! <laughs> Scythium, that didn't make much noise, but thank you very much. It just went oof. Uh, so let me tell you what these are. So I I have a... I try and like minutely control my air conditioning and heating more than I should. Like I have it automated, but I still take... I still like to take control. So what I do with these, this just... They're not on right now. These are buttons which turn on or turn off my, basically my thermostats. So these turn on or turn off my climate controls. So in, in Home Assistant, I've got all these, I've got two air conditioning climates, climate entities, which is like a thermostat. And then because we have radiant heat in the floor of the house, we have a bunch of these different zones all throughout the house, the basement, upstairs, downstairs, we've got whatever this is, seven different zones. And each zone has its own thermostat. And each zone is tied to several different um, uh, uh, temperature sensors. So it gets an uh, a average temperature sensor in the area where it is um, supposed to work. But I want to make sure that it, these, aren't, uh, these aren't turning on when they shouldn't turn on. And I, sometimes I want to make sure that the air conditioning is turned off, even, with, you know, even if the temperature says it should be on. So I do that by just turning off the whole climate entity. And that's what I do with these buttons. So that answers that. And no, I don't live in the South Pole, but. Radiant heat more efficient than running a furnace. Yeah. Yeah, it is quite a bit. And it's more comfortable too. And it's not noisy. Home remote app for integrations. I have not. No, I haven't. That's why I like Shetty schedule. When you manually change things, Shetty will autocorrect after a set time uh, to out back on the schedule. Yeah, still, Doctor, I haven't played with it in a long time. Maybe you'll have to help me. Has anyone had any problems changing the entity pictures for the Xbox Live integration? Mine shows the yellow triangles. I haven't played with the Xbox Live integration in a while, Panda Boy. Sorry, man. Oh, you're just kidding about the South Pole. Does anyone know if I can run Hyperion on Cody's Xenon build? It's made for... It's made for... I guess it's made for Linux. Are you running Linux on your Xenon? I think you, I mean, it probably doesn't have to be Ras Raspbian. Inflow Radiant is awesome in the winter in the garage. If you put down a tool, pick it up, it's warm. It doesn't freeze your hands. First world problems, but it still rocks nice. <laughs> Shows us all your different views. War tracks, are you talking to me? Oh, you want me to show you all my different views up here? Well, most of them are inactive, but I can show you. So this is the main one that I use. This is the Google Hub, which for sometimes, not always, but I, I have had it um, cast to my Google Hub because here on my desk, I've got a Google Hub and the Amazon Echo device, which I can actually show you, might as well. Since we're just shooting a breeze today, today's a breeze shooting day. I'll just bend this camera around a little bit. So there's my there's my Google Hub right there. And there's my little five inch uh Echo Show in the corner right there. And then actually I also have my HA switch plate right there. <laughs> so I got a few little button screens to play with. Um but because I was casting it to my hub, I used that icon for the hub. So that's what, this is the main one that I use almost all the time for me, myself. This one is for the phones, which I use mostly for the garage, just to turn open and close the garage. Um, but I don't honestly use that very much anymore. This is my old main one that I used to use in the office here, but I don't use it that much anymore. I do still use it sometimes, but not a ton anymore. 
This one has all of the air conditioning stuff. So this is probably the second most common one that I use. And this has all of my heating and cooling stuff. So I've got the cool things down stuff. So I can open window. This window controller seems to be offline. And I can turn on the quiet cool. And we have an air filter downstairs. So I can cool things off. I can heat things up. This is turning on all of the different furnaces or different um, zones for the heat radiant heat. Obviously, I already told you about these things. This is also two different thermostats for the air conditioner. I was just trying these mini. This is a different card. This is the mini thermostat card, which I was testing out, which I like. It's pretty cool. Sometimes if your display is too small, like if you try and make these really small like this, this climate card, things kind of overlap and it's a little hard to control. Um, but these can do that. Okay. Boys temp is pretty cold. Yeah, I'm sure it's just disconnected or something. Look at all these unavailable temperature sensors right now. Dang it. Oh, you know what? Those are all Zigbee too. I wonder if something's up with that. I haven't, that, it, that wasn't like that last time I looked. Yeah, the boys room temperature. Yeah, it's just disconnected, unfortunately. <laughs> so yeah, not super accurate <laughs> right now. All right, this is for a tablet for downstairs. This is, uh, this was, I was creating this and then I just created this for our main tablet downstairs. So this one we use downstairs all the time. And this is the one that's in the kitchen, which is pretty useful. This one plays music for the Echo Show that Mrs. Z's listens to music on in the kitchen. So these are her buttons for songs that her and the kids would want to listen to. There's the front door. There's the boys' room. Jackson's in there playing some game on his PC. Oh, somebody hit the theater camera, it looks like. It's pointing at the ceiling. And the toy room. So those are rooms that are far away that I can't see very often. So I have those cameras on that tablet downstairs. And then to turn on the Alarminator. Um, what else? Walk you through the rest of these. This might be kind of boring. This one I don't think has anything. This is my lab. So this is where I just test stuff out. Um, this is part of the floor plan stuff now. Oh no, this one's not. Gosh, I don't even use that one anymore. This is part of the floor plan stuff. So I haven't checked, I haven't played with this one in a while either. But this is the Sweet Home 3D floor plan layout ones for each floor of the house. This was going to be to control TVs. Don't use it very much. This was going to be outside. Don't use it very much. But it has like the outside lights on and stuff like that. Uh, don't use that one. This is the back. And then the, a lot of these are just a single cameras so that if I want it to pull up just a view, like using the browser mod, um, the browser mod app or whatever. Oh, look, we got some company. Somebody just walked up to the back door. It's our neighbors. <laughs> so that's the backyard camera. And then we've got the front door camera. We've got the driveway camera. We've got the toy room camera. We've got this stairway camera, which, oh, there it is. This, this is the hallway right outside of my office. This is the toy room or the, the theater room down there. This is the main office. Mrs. Z would kill me if she knew that you saw that picture. This is me. Click on it to get it live. There it is. Come on. Where are you? Why is it lag so bad? Anyways, oh, the camera's pissed off. Maybe Blue Iris is mad at me. Huh, that's funny. Oh, oh, you know what? We just had a whole bunch of issues because this is just... Oh, you're casting. Maybe that's what... Did I hit something to cast? Unable to find a view with path three. Huh. And somebody started casting. This was when I was experimenting with uh, graphs and stuff from Grafana. So I had a whole view just for Grafana. So that's it. That bore you to tears. Now we have three viewers. <laughs> Looking for a good RGB bulb for my son's room at his mom's. I have a spare Raspberry Pi 4, Amazon Echo, and a Zigbee dongle. Any suggestions? Um, probably, like, are you super opposed to using just Tuya? Because if, if, you, if you use Tuya... If she would let you connect, you know, you're talking about like his mom's and you don't live there. And so there's some issue there, but with how much stuff you can set up over there, I suppose. But if you just have like any RGB to your bulb and you set it up to connect to the internet and then to your to your app, you can control it through the to your app and you can control it through the integration and home system. You want easy? That's easy. 
if you want to do it hard, then you set up a whole home assistant instance over at her house and you use a RGB bulb flashed with Tasmoda and control it through VPN. <laughs> That's the hard way. <laughs> hmm. Do I run a server rack? No. Desperate devices. Are you asking me, Mark? I just run in the little nook. All right, let's let's flash this thing. I'm going to flash this guy. I'm just bouncing around. I'm going to take one of these Node MCUs and I'm going to flash it. Going to flash it with the flashy flasher. Pull out one of these. Oh, Gizar, do you do you do uh, Portuguese? You do videos in Portuguese? That's awesome. Dr. Z's in the hookup favorite channels. Man, that's cool. This one has WLED on it. I can tell because the little blue light came on. Couldn't you just use any RGB bulb that works with Amazon Echo? Yeah, you could. But it would be connected. Yeah, you could put, I mean, you'd put the Echo there too. Yeah. Centralized computer hub. It's a Raspberry Pi running an infrastructure. Oh, it's a, it is a Nook. It's a little i3 Nook. It's probably at least five years old. Somebody gave it to me because uh, he wasn't using it anymore. Salty Automations. He gave it to me. And, uh, it, but it was still plenty good enough to run this. Thank you, Jim, for subscribing. We have not celebrated anybody's subscriptions in a little while. And let's do this. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sir Good Enough, for being Link Man. Link Man. Zigbee is a con. I don't think Zigbee's so bad. Apparently, I mean, I just, I just started using Zigbee a few months ago, and I've liked it. Um, but it's also like I got into it after it became a bit more. I don't know if it's open or cheaper or whatever, but it's not too bad for some of the stuff. And also, I, I'm. It's unfair because. I don't have any Zigbee stuff that I've bought. People send me Zigbee stuff and I use it and it's good. That's all I can tell you. So is it is it worth the money or something? I don't know. UDM Pro. Oh yeah, you're blaming the hookup for making you upgrade to the UDM Pro. <laughs> when setting up the Hyperion wiring, do the LEDs need to link the same ground as the Pi to work correctly? Yes. Yes, they do. That's why on mine, Sandman, I use one power supply and use that power supply to power the Pi and the LEDs. Oh, that's this one. That's the top. Oh, I should probably not use that one then because that one's already flashed for my outdoor lights. Let's try this one. All right. Uh, let's go to the flash easy. Oh. It's actually not flash easy anymore. It's ESP Home Flasher. There it is. We're going to put on here the newest version of this uh, fancy McFancy Luciferin. This is probably going to be a really poor demonstration of this because I'm only able to half pay attention to what I'm doing. And I haven't done any of it beforehand off, off live. So yeah, forget it. Screw it. We'll do it live. Okay. Flash. Just making sure I have 266 LEDs and so many. So it does not work correctly. Oh, yeah. Just make sure you got the, the power supply that is sized big enough to run 266 LEDs and the Pi. And then I would just split the, you know, take the wires out of the power supply one way or the other. Power the Pi, power the LEDs. That way you have the nice common ground flash oh thank you quindor for recognizing that <laughs> how many others can name that movie i'm sure a lot of you can how many others have seen that movie more than once i have did i lose quality on the tv using hdmi converter um you will if you're used to watching 4k tv wellington if you're using if you're using the all-in-one that i am using yes but you can use we talked about this a little while ago but um you, so sorry to repeat it for everybody that's been here, but you can use the fork, a 4K splitter and just a simple um, capture card. Dun, 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 dun. 
We're gonna just do for whoever just subscribed. You get this. It is a clean song, but it's for the Flash Gordon movie soundtrack. Sorry to say, Plex thinks it is Netflix now pauses after a certain amount of videos played. Also, the rest of the things they are added and not fixing bugs. Jellyfin for the win nowadays. Is that right? Jellyfin's a lot better than Plex right now? HDR won't work if I get a splitter. Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe. All right. Uh, now I believe I should. I haven't set this up before. I haven't done it, so I don't know what's going to happen. I'm assuming that there will be a hot spot for this that I can go in and put some information in. I don't know. MB. MB, huh? MB, that's the new media player of choice. So how that works is you you guys that use these Plex and you're switching around, you've got you've got one um server, hard drive, multiple hard drives, whatever, where you house all your video files, and then you've got whatever front end that just accesses those files for you, right? And so it might be it might be Plex, it might be MB, it might be whatever. Is that right? Is that how you do it? This stupid thing has had troubles lately. Let's see if we can do this. Just found Jellyfin trying to set up my own media library. Big server sends to Cody, for example. In a nutshell, yes. Okay, good. I have a home server, but I actually run the MB server on my NVIDIA Shield. Because it's so good at transcoding. Oh, cool. da -da 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 okay, so I'm not seeing a new Wi Fi network for this. Maybe. Maybe it, sometimes my little Wi Fi dongle for this PC doesn't always show me everything. Like some, I've had issues where I've tried to flash a WLED board. No? Not showing up. It is possible that when it flashed, it did not erase the EEPROM. And in that case, it may already have my Wi Fi information to connect to my network. So I'm going to go to my network and see if perhaps there is something on here that would be called Luciferin. Although, that's bad. It's red. It's red. Too many Wi Fi devices. No. Clients. And I maybe there's something on maybe it's called Luciferin. Nope. Maybe it's called Glowworm. No. Maybe I should read how to set it up. <laughs> Why bother? Why bother reading instructions? What's what's great about this, what's supposed to be really awesome about it, is so it runs this little JavaScript app on your PC, and he's working on Linux and Mac. And then it just sends a signal to the ESP8266. So you don't have to have the Pi and all that stuff. And you still get the same effect as long as you're running it from a computer with a with one of those three computer operating systems. Right now it's just Windows, but it'll be there. He'll get them all eventually. Download the firmware. Flash the microcontroller. You can download the ESP Home Flasher software. Easy GUI. ESP devices. How do I get to that GUI? I thought I had done it before. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I guess I can look here at the uptime and see what has been very short uptime. Oops. It might tell me which one's which. Make the connect matrix office. No. So it's not connected to my, it's not connected to my home network. 
So there's got to be something here. Nope. Not there. Huh. All right. Well, we'll have to come back to this. I need some time. It's not fair to you guys to hold you hostage while I try and sort this out. Oh well. Um, did I upgrade the Wi-Fi? Wi -Fi. Oh yes, I did, Kevin. Yes, I did a while ago. The Tasmatizer fail button, fail button. I need to re-download the Tasmatizer because it always crashes for me. I don't know what's on. Switch it off and on again. I did once, but I'll do it again. Mm -mm. Kevin, I went to, yeah, I went to Unify, as you can see. I went to Unify, and it's been, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty good. It certainly has all of the ridiculous um, settings that you could ever want. I had previously unplugged it and plugged it back in, but I will do it again. And it's just not showing up. It's just not showing up. And it's, there's nothing new connected here in the last couple of minutes. Let me try reflash it again. Maybe that's what we need to do. Did I flash it? But maybe I. Let's just try. Let's try the light. Oh, you know what we should do? Let's try the blank. Let's like totally blank this thing. Let's wipe it. Four megabyte blank, baby. Wipe it. Set up Bitwarden last night. Works great. Awesome, Bradley. I've liked it too. I actually have quite enjoyed it. It's been very nice. It has been very nice. And despite being an advanced user, I like that one thing to be no nonsense. <laughs> Did I ever have a problem with Google Wi-Fi dropping out every so often? Yeah, but I have that problem still. I don't know if it's always the router or whatever. I, You know, if I had to be totally honest, I would say my binary is invalid. So maybe that's not going to work. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure that that's got... No, that's not going to work. Because um, if I flash it with WLED, it will go looking for my Wi-Fi again. Now let's just try this again. Let's try the light instead. Plug it. Come on, you sticker. Okay, let's try it again. I don't. Uh, you can't push a four megabyte file to a one megabyte device. Well, this is a. This should be four megabytes. This is a. This is a Node MCU. It should have four megabytes on it. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe I'm wrong. Google Wi-Fi drops for a split second multiple times a day. Yeah, that sucks. Notice using Hyperion, if I add the software as a switch in Home Assistant, it only toggles on and off the first WLED module. The rest stay on. Any suggestion? Not sure if all the ports change per unit. Um, uh, I don't know if it works when it's doing UDP raw, but could you could you set that first WLED module to sync with the others? You probably don't want to do that. <laughs> you could do that. It, that might solve your problem of turning it all off at the same time, but that would what that would probably also do is run all of them as the same screen capture, right? It would capture whatever screen that first one is listening on and they would send it to all of them. So no, that's probably not a good idea. Scratch that. Reese did change his name now. He did change his name to like uh, Linux Reese because he said, I need to use Linux now. <laughs> so yeah, he did change his name. Um, okay, so I'm going to unplug it and I'm going to plug it back in. You guys got to tell me, am I hitting this microphone too much? I've put this pop filter. I put the pop filter on, but it 
now it's got this thing that dangles down way low, and I gotta try and not bump into it. It's kind of a bummer. All right, let's try again. Nope. Nope. We'll try it on the phone. I'll chat with David. I, I need to just actually spend some time chatting with him, and and I'm sure that he just assumes that some of these things are easy, and they probably should be, but. I'm just doing something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, just doing something wrong. Swing it to and fro. Swing, swing, swing. <laughs> swing it to and fro. Too bad you can't do it through here. You could, if you could make this so that this could communicate and you could put your information in here, that'd be nice. Task entryway. I wonder if it's this. Probably not. Because it could be that it's, you know, I put hasp entryway. Yeah, no, that's it. That's actually my entryway. So that's not going. Oh, well. Okay. Well, I had one plan for the, for the topic for today. And an hour and a half later, hour and a half later, I'm going to have to start over. All right. Tie them in a bow. What are you guys talking about? First WLED light strip with D1 Mini works nice. Excellent. <laughs> what do you guys tie it to? Oh, what do you do with the ears when your ears hang low? <laughs> when your ears hang low, do they wobble to and fro? Is that what you're talking about? I know that one. Yeah, yeah, I do. Thanks for suggesting the UDP forwarding. I did indeed try that initially. I'll try bringing it up to the Hyperion guys. Yeah, sorry. Probably uh, TP modding is the, the guy that I go to a lot. I don't know if he's a developer or if he's just really. Wow. Busy at work. You, you guys are singing some song. Maybe I don't know all the words to that one. Thank you. Oh, you like Jazar's videos a lot. We should look at Jazar net. Let's, let's go to Jazar's web uh, uh, YouTube page. Let's give Jazar some subscriptions. If I were not already subscribed, of course he does it in Portuguese. So you'll have to learn Portuguese. Jizar. Jizar. Jizarnet. I've probably started to watch some of yours and not because it's in uh, Portuguese, not gotten very far. Home Automation Lovely. Subscribe to Jizarnet. There we go. Amigos Mo. There you go. Uh, my WLED is offline a lot. Any ideas? Um, make sure you're on the latest firmware and there, gosh, there is, there is some, uh, they do disconnect a lot. So there's also a spot, um, where you need to tell it not to fall asleep. So you could try that and see if that's the problem. Cause sometimes if it falls asleep, it'll disconnect. Um, Let's see, is it security? No. Uh, sync interfaces? No, I think it's Wi-Fi setup. Wi-Fi setup. Here we go. Oh, I should do this. Look at that. Disable Wi-Fi sleep. So check that box to disable Wi-Fi sleep. Try that. Check the last video at 1324. Okay. Yeah, you've said that a couple times, so let's do that. Did I already pass? Did I? Yeah, I did. Dang it. Jizar net. This video here. At 13. We'll watch it for a couple seconds. Bought a clone piece from Sonoff claiming smart on off. Tried to hack it, has mode, couldn't. Any idea? Uh, you know what? Are you, did you try? Uh, 13, we passed 1324. Was this, were you telling somebody else to try 1324? 
Or do you just want me to see something? No, Hyperion from last week. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this one. Oh, look at you. Yeah. You got all these different. Did you do your little graphic that like that? That's really cool. There he goes. There he is. Oh, that's 1234. We're going to go to 13. So he's explaining all these. Yep. Did you put that graphic together too? That's nice. Good job. So let me let me share this at the 1324. Yeah, I can. There'll be LED to there, jumpers to there. Yeah, this is good, man. And then you've got the splitter, and you're doing this, the USB capture. Nice, nice. That's the extent of my Portuguese. <laughs> no follow Portuguese. Uh. So, yeah. My guess is, Allah, if you, you bought a Portuguese or a Portuguese, you bought a Sonoff or it said it was on off and it's not, it's some knockoff, it probably still has the ESP8266 chip in it. So you could still get in there and manually flash it with Tasmoda. So you'd have to make sure you find all the right pins, the RXTX, uh, which I don't remember what they are on there. Anyways, you'll have to find them. Probably not going to be something easy for you, but it's, is it possible? Probably. But then you, I don't know for sure, like what pins are going to control the relay and the switch. And so you might have a bit of a struggle. Sorry. And you've got a remote sensor on this. Nice. The video is Brazilian. Yeah, it's in Portuguese. Florida is the worst. <laughs> What did I miss? It could fire us back. Oh, good. You didn't miss anything. I kind of gave up on this. Um, I gave up on this Luciferin thing until I've got some time to tinker with it myself. I flashed the firmware on a Node MCU, but I cannot find the Wi-Fi to, you know, the access point to connect to it. Um, let me see. Maybe he's maybe he sent me a message in Discord. Charlie. Ahorita no, amigo. Algunas semanas más. Oh, he probably asked me that question a long time ago. Um, okay. Let's see. He says... We have only one topic. This means LEDs, ESPN, and two monitors. He says it should work with two monitors. Luciferin calculates the reading zone automatically. This means if you have 100 LEDs, it calculates 100 zones on your monitor where to read the color. You can tweak the XYZ position of the zone manually, but it's not convenient. If you want to let the software does this for you, you should attach the LED strip in this way at the bottom. Okay. Ring, ring. See nut, thank you very much. We haven't done this in a while. Let's do some of that. Somebody whistled. Was that a whistle? Yeah, two monitors could be tricky. I've never tried it. All right, he says just released the Wi Fi MQTT version. You can now send the image to the ESP via wireless using an MQTT stream. Oh, no USB cable is needed now. To enable this new feature, simply go to the settings and enable. Enable MQTT and MQTT stream checks checkboxes. How do you how do you how does it like how does this ESP device connect to my Wi-Fi or my ES my my um yeah. 
I think I think it's got to be there's a, there's an access point on the ESP device that I am not finding. I'm doing something wrong. I'm missing a step. So, anyways, we'll get it. We'll get it. Doggone it. Dagnabbit. Dark Bunny. South is SC for South Carolina. All right. What else do you guys want to talk about? This has been like a total, total nothing stream. Maybe not a total nothing, but hasn't been a fixed topic. And that's my fault. Um, is does anybody live off the grid? We can talk about what I want to talk about. Does anybody live off the grid? <laughs> Five finger death punch helps with the rhyme thing. He's going to set up out back and build a studio in it. Oh wait, what? Kevin, what are you talking about, Kevin Roof? Come to Arizona. Put that on your family's land. Oh, Doc is moving off the grid. Yep. Smart Home Dome. Oh, you guys are asking about that? Made a live stream again. All right, Kenneth is back. The rhyme is completely gone. The rhyme? I feel like my initial is used to make up your name. Oh. <laughs> it's only 115 in Vegas. Oh, man. Bag that. Yes, Dr. Z is going to become a hobbit and move to his own dome house. That's true. Eventually. Not, 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 I mean, we're going to build it, but I'm not going to live there for a while. And the smartify and then smartify it. That's right. It's going to be, it's going to use dome home or dome assistant or hobbit assistant, something like that, we'll call it. <laughs> the rhythm. Oh, the rhythm. Rhythm. Why did I see rhyme? How many solar panels do I have, Mike? Right now I have 39 and I don't, I, I probably wouldn't need that many for the Hobbit holes, but I want as many as I can get in 20 years when the kids have all grown. Yeah. In about 11 more, maybe I still probably won't live there full time, but we'll, we'll go up there a lot. Careful. Getting that dome shipped will be as much as in import fees. You think so? You think the import fees on something like that would be a lot? I guess I'll find out. It's weird. Some things will have import fees and some things won't. So I don't exactly know how to figure it out. It's probably because, I mean, it's going to have to ship this thing in a freaking container. You know, it's going to be huge. It's going to be crazy. So when they say shipping is $800, to me, that sounds cheap for what it is, for how flipping huge it is. Am I going to get fiber hooked up? Can you stream from the back porch on your state? <laughs> Maybe someday. <laughs> we got good cell signal up there. Saw a 3D printed concrete home the other day. Yeah, four tracks. Is that the one? Um, well, I shared the video because I like, I've seen some do that and I like that idea. Did I ever get my guided missile? Did it, did it ever arrive from Russia? Uh, can you get an extra LED bulb in Hyperion, for example? You got the LED strip behind the TV and the bulbs on either side of the TV. Uh, I don't know. I don't believe so. I believe it's one input to one output. So, no, I don't think you can. I could be wrong, but I don't think you can. Did I get my new RF thing working now with the new firmware? Yes. I know you worked on it, but is it done? Yeah. I mean, did I finish getting all the codes and programming the shade and putting all that into Home Assistant? No. I ordered $3,000 pergola from China. 800 is just putting it on the ship. I've already paid over $2,000 in port fees, customs, and addition 400 for shipping. Holy crap. Ah, turkeys. Okay. Time to try and find some US-based solution then. Why don't you just buy a monolithic dome home? It's essentially canvas sprayed on concrete. and It's nearly indestructible. Well, where do I find that, Mr. Jake? Because that sounds great. Okay. 
intergalactic dome with a 50 year lifespan. Simple Terra, $21,000 for this little bubble. It's cool though. I'm glad, I appreciate the warning there, Rob. I will definitely make sure I know what I'm getting into before I actually have them put this thing on the boat. The Wi-Fi access point starts after you flash the bin. Well, that should be, that should be the case. That should be the case, Mac. And that's what I was looking for. I never found one. Call Demolition Ranch. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> Demolition Ranch. Bunker Branding Company. Influencers, whoa. Bunker gear, but I don't want t-shirts. I want a dome. I don't need a t-shirt. I need a dome. Huh. It's not our fault this time. This is the first time you have ordered something from China. Oh, is that what they said? <laughs> oh, man. I uh, thought you did random stuff. This channel is full of random crap. He does. <laughs> oh, good. You thought you did random stuff. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I've been in communication with these guys, so I'm happy to go ahead and tell them I need to know the exact cost to my door. Don't screw with me. Because I did run into that with the Permatrack. Yeah, I sure did. I sure did run into that problem with the permit track. So it's you say it's canvas sprayed with concrete and it's indestructible. Monolithic floor plans products. So that's it drying, I'm sure under the canvas there, right? Monolithic air form concrete pumps. The other thing I'll have to do is determine if, because this is, these are pretty bleep and cheap, you know, just for the styrofoam. So what will it cost to get that thing already delivered? I don't know. Does that have too good to be true ring to it for such a large thing from the other side of the world? Amen. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. Concrete domes are good enough, says, oh, if I, I'm going to open that copy link. Open that over here. <laughs> All right, so they've dug a hole. They're laying some tarp, some like tar paper stuff. And then they're getting it wet. Fibrous hydrophilic top surface, tightly bond fibers. Pre made concrete canvas tents, just add water. Oh. Our land is right by the highway, so a semi-truck could seriously just pull up and drop it off. Yeah, I don't so much need a bunker, like a quickly inflatable bunker. Wow. 
Wow, that's crazy huge. Oh, never mind. It's not as big as I thought. And then he sprays it and it turns into concrete. That's crazy. Huh. Once it gets wet, it stays. They use that stuff. Water retainment basins. Oh, wow. So you can basically build a frame of anything you want and then put that stuff on it, and get it wet, and you're and you're good, huh? Huh. That is very interesting. That is pretty slick. It's basically like a cast. <laughs> right? It's like when you when you get a cast. The splinting material. It's time for a hobbit hole. Just hope it doesn't rain first before you get it all set. Wonder what that costs per square foot or per square yard. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Pre-made concrete canvas. Let's try. Let's just search for concrete canvas. You want to talk about random stuff today. Oh, baby. We are off. Huh? Concrete canvas for sale. So, wow. No way. Drainage and erosion control fabric, ultra heavy duty, for applications which require dimensionally stable, thick geotextile. Eight ounce non woven is an ideal choice. These needle punched fabrics are non biodegradable, tear resistant. So I don't think this is the stuff because that's pretty cheap. 12 and a half feet by 360 feet for $1,000 with free shipping. No. Although that gives me a great idea. So we've got this turkey of a neighbor who owns this empty lot that they never take care of. And it's got huge weeds. And I would love to just roll some of this concrete stuff on it and spray it. <laughs> be like, I, I don't know how that got there. It happened in the middle of the night. One morning I came out, it was just that way. Huh. I think this is just like the fill stuff or something. I can't imagine that this is real. Okay, shot by power. Wait, erosion control, drainage infiltration. Yeah. Maybe that's just what they put under it. Got it. Concrete canvas. Concretecanvas.com. Okay, okay. Pricing, pricing, come on. Pricing, pricing, come on. Come on. I hate when they don't give you at least some hint. At least some, give me some hint. Okay, we're just going to do what does concrete canvas cost? Did anybody already look this up? driveway fabric like I mean I'm looking at these but I just cannot imagine that that's real okay here we go concrete canvas shelter would cost 23,000 viral sensation Alibaba geo fabrics Concrete canvas. Function applications. Installations. Yeah, that's because they... Uh, I don't think they're going to give us anything. I don't think we're going to get any good... Any price. They only sell the large contractors, yeah. Call for a quote, yeah. Wow. 
Well, um, these domes, one, somebody's got to be able to make these. Oh, that YouTube's just been playing this whole time. Somebody's got to be able to make these in the U.S., right? What do you got, Seamus? There's a big shop where concrete canvas cost between. Oh, that's what I just, yeah. Shop button at the top. Did I lose it? Did I close it? NextBigFuture.com, 2011. In the UK, if you look for a piece of public land for 10 years, you can legally claim it. Oh, man, that would be, we're so close. Like if I look after that piece of land for another, it's not abandoned like the guy, had, but he hasn't done anything to it. So, Like we know who the owner is. It's just, that would be nice. Concrete Canvas website. That's just that. This is those guys again. What was that? Here it said shop. Select your store. Oh man, this is all in New Zealand. Australia. Oh, well, gives you an idea. Concrete canvas. This is actually really interesting. Flexible concrete impregnated fabric that hardens when hydrated to form a thin, durable, waterproof, and fire resistant concrete layer. Eight millimeters. What? Oh, so it's eight millimeters, but then it's one point one millimeter or one point one meters wide, and four long. Is that it? So if you go with the eight millimeter thick, it's going to be a little more than a meter wide, and it's going to be five meters long, for four hundred dollars. You go with the thinner stuff, it's 10 meters long and one meter wide. Delivery information. Need it today? Yes. <laughs> huh. Okay. Well, I got some shopping to do. Thanks for the stream. See you later, Will. Thanks for being here. If I use Drainage Basin, you might have an easier time finding a contractor who does that work and finding a source through them. I believe that in Brazil, it's the same thing. 10 years paying for utilities and the land is yours. If I've connected a PS4 to your Android TV, can Hyperion display both the TV and the PS4 on the LED strips? Where's the signal getting the? I mean, if you split the if you split the HDMI from the PS4, and if you send the PS if you send the HDMI signal from the PS4 to the capture card, yes. How is the TV getting its signal? Is the TV getting its signal from something else? You might have to use a, a second capture card or another. Switch, maybe an HDMI switch. Need it today? Yeah, I do. Four and a half meters is going to be a heavy roll of concrete. Well, that's probably why they keep it that short, maybe. What's well, TP Moddings here? How's it going? We've had lots of Hyperion questions today, amigo. Lots, 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 lots. I want to ask you, Mr. TP Modding, do you want to take a peek at this with me? We won't do it right now, but this uh, Luciferin thing. Can you have more than one capture card to the Pi? Yes. Yes, you can. But you're not going to really be using more than one signal. So I would, in, this is my opinion, I would, instead of using that, here's actually, I have that thing. Instead of having more than one capture card, I would use an HDMI switch that you can switch between one input and the other. And then you just switch which one is going to the, which HDMI input is going to the capture card. So you hook the, hook the capture card on this end, hook your other inputs on this end, and then you switch back and forth. 
That's what I would do. But you can. You certainly can. All right, got to go for dinner. Ikafar's got to go. We're probably going to wrap up here pretty soon anyways. We haven't done anything today. It's been a totally unaccomplished nothing day. <laughs> Actually, I learned about concrete, and I learned that um, I'm, this has got to be too good to be true. So I would have to work with somebody to get that here, and that would cost another chunk of change. So I'm going to have to figure that out. I really want to try these because they look really cool and they're made out of basically insulation, but you still have to coat these with, you still have to coat these with concrete anyways. So maybe doing that concrete canvas stuff. I don't know, not so bad. Thank you, Jeff Thompson for subscribing. Thanks for whoever said it was an awesome stream anyways. Concrete squirrel stream. All right, let's call everybody up. Does the HDMI switcher pass through HDMI CEC? Somebody asked that earlier today, and I believe the answer was, does the switcher pass it through? You know, I don't know. I, I my, my guess is you'll have to just look at each one, and I would think not, but I don't know the CEC technology very well. So I could totally be wrong. Um, so I would say you'd have to, you'd have to try and see. Nope, TP Modding says nope. I trust him. No, it does not, Gzar says. Okay, yep, and he knows a lot too. Gzar's made a nice video, a nice long video about it. Portuguese. Those switches are not that good. There you go. Lame. Switches are not that good. So then just get a couple capture cards instead. You'd be better off, or at least as good off. Anyone know how to scan a Zigbee network, like for channel selection? I don't. Somebody might. Let's call the kids up for the sign-off. First, we're going to do one of these because we haven't done this enough today, and I don't have any Dr. Pepper. Drink water today. Yeah. My switch does CEC just fine. Ooh, Bradley. There you go. Well, you guys get together and make sure you got the right switch because that would have been my assumption. My assumption would be that some will and some won't, but I don't know. Just need to find out why my Hyperion keeps resetting every few hours. Yeah, that is weird. Zigbee add-ons and hacks. Yes, there are. Is that what you mean? To f but I don't know what he means exactly. What exactly do you mean by find the channel? I don't. Maybe I just don't know the terminology you're using. Still no sponsor. Nope. Nope. I got to do a few hundred more, a few hundred more uh, free advertisements for them before they'll give me even a, one free bottle. That's all I really want. They can help you scan and map. Oh, cool. Heat on the RPI caused the reset. Yeah, that's a good that's a good possibility. All right, calling the kids. Calling the kids up for the sign off. Let's see if it works. It's time for sign off. It's time for sign off. It's time for sign off. Yeah, Paul, there has been a world shortage of Dr. Pepper. It's crazy. Zigbee channel and Hubitat. Here they come. Hi, guys. I have a canker store. It's time for sign off. It's time for sign off. I have a canker store. Oh, I'm so sorry. You have a canker store? Don't eat yeah. salt and vinegar chips. So, juice. don't eat salt and vinegar chips. Yeah, that would suck. So, are we? how should we sign off today, kids? School. Should we sign off like we're going back to school? Should we sign off like no, we're going back to school? Sign off. Yeah, you really... if, you, if you like, if you want to go to school, be like happy. If you don't want to go to school, be like... Yeah. Okay. Sign off with your first day back to school attitude. Ready? So first day back to school attitude. That's what you're going to use. As always, thanks for watching. Some are happy. Some are not. Some are happy and some are not. Some are happy and some are not. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. Um, we'll see you next Sunday.